Alright guys, this is Tacho here, playing some Fire Emblem Heroes, and we're gonna be doing an arena run today. I'm in tier 19, and I'm trying to rank up to tier 20. This video is actually a little bit late. I intended to upload this a couple of days ago, but I didn't really have too much time to edit the music and the commentary and all that, so this video is a bit late. I did end up making it to tier 20, so I was pretty happy about that, but I... The thing is, every time I get to tier 20, I just don't even try, and I just wind up ending back down into tier 19. So I don't really have too much of a problem with that. But anyway, here we go. My bonus unit on this team is Legion, and I gave him a pretty cool setup. I gave him Reciprocal Aid, Escape Route 3, Threaten Defense 3, Brave Axe Plus, Moonbow, and Fury 3. So it's a pretty offensive setup, and the idea is, because Legion's HP is so high, if I use Reciprocal Aid on him, I can pretty much fully heal any unit, like I'm gonna do right here, I'm gonna fully heal my Ike after he took on that Sanaki. And that's also gonna put Ike back up to full health, so he's gonna have an easier time against Nino there. So it's a pretty cool setup. And also, once after I use Reciprocal Aid, that means... Legion is going to be on low enough HP that I can get Escape Route 3 to come into play and have him fly in, in front of one of my units to get a kill with the Brave Axe Plus. And I gave him the Quick Impulse Seal as well, so on the first strike he can have Moonbow activate. That was actually a bad idea though, I should have kept Reprisal on him because that's actually his default skill and... The thing about Reprisal is that it's going to add 30% of his HP lost as damage. And that's really good for this setup since it's basically just a danger setup with him being at low health. So Reprisal would actually outperform Moonbow on this set. I kept Fury 3 on him because he defaults with that and it's a pretty good A slot skill. But if I was being ideal I'd probably try to give him Death Blow 3. It's just that I don't have any more father to give Deathblow 3 to him, so I had to just settle for um, Fury 3 there. Which is perfectly fine, I mean Fury 3 is still one of the best. And then I've got my usual trio there, we've got Ike, Azura, and Hector. Ike and Hector can of course counter from two spaces, so they're very good and... The only thing I would add to this team is giving Distant Counter to Azura, so I could just have the perfect trio there and be able to counter-attack any range unit and have the advantage. So I'm pretty satisfied with this arena team and that's why I always use it. I do want to switch it up though and start using some different teams, but I can't actually build any other teams until a couple of certain units come back into the rotation. Like, what I've been waiting for for quite some time now is Hinoka to come back as a focus unit so I can summon her on a banner. But I, I don't know when Hinoka is going to come back. She's the only source of Hone Flyers, so you really need her for the Flyer Emblem team. And also Bunny Camilla, I, there's just no way to get Bunny Camilla anymore and she's the only flying mage in the game. So she's pretty much a must-have on Flyer Emblem. But you can't get her anymore, so that, that just really blows. Okay, I'm in a bit of a tight spot here. I remember this move well because I was I was like, oh man, I think I'm screwed here, but I was able to work it out. The problem came up because that Erika has a rally skill and she ended up rallying on Azura instead of walking into my trap there, so I, w I was a little thrown off by that. But I should be able to make a good comeback. If I leave Azura there, she's gonna get hit by Nino, so I have to move her back one space. And I definitely can't leave Hector there, or else Erika's gonna get the double on him and probably finish him off. So my best bet would be to leave Ike in front there. Yeah, just like I thought, I was going to move Azura back one space. Just to get her out of Nino's range. And then I'm going to probably pivot Hector off Ike so he gets the Spur Defense 3 buff. And I just wanted to check my damage against Erika there to make sure she can't one-round me. 
So even if Azura dances on Erika on that turn, I'm gonna proc Vantage and then I'm gonna finish her off. And that's exactly how I'm gonna finish off Nino, but Erika threw a curveball and she went after Azura there. Not like it was a big deal because Azura's got a better matchup against her than Ike does. But I, I was like, oh man, I didn't see that coming. So it did catch me off guard, but it didn't matter. Okay, moving on to the next round here. Oh man, this fight. Actually, this is probably the funniest arena fight I ever had. Because it's a team of nothing but glass cannons. And then they have Bikini Robin as their bonus unit. But this is really damn funny here what happened. Probably the fastest arena run match I've ever done. Because the problem with all these glass cannons that they have is that... They are very low on defense, so I can actually get the one-hit KO on all of them. So if I just put Ike up there to bait one of them and they attack Ike, that's going to put his HP low enough that he's going to proc Vantage on all the other attacks. And since Ike is strong enough to get the one-hit kill on them, that pretty much means they're all bones. So <laughs> check this out. Okay, looks like Sanaki's coming in first. So now Ike's on low health, but he's going to Vantage and KO all of these guys there. So that, that's the reason why I really like having defense so much in the arena. And also I can just Wings of Mercy Legion next to Hector there. Or not Wings of Mercy, Escape Route 3. As long as he's below 23 HP, he can fly to my other characters. So really cool there, that was a quick finish. Okay, this guy's got Delthea, so he's pretty much ready for the next round. I managed to summon Delthea on the very first summon, if you guys saw my summoning video. Pretty awesome there. I wasn't able to get Sonya, though. And I'm really lacking on green units, actually. I checked my box, and the only real green units I have are Hector, Legion, Cecilia, and... Merrick, and Merrick's a little too slow, so he can't really pull off the Blade Tome combo thing. And Hector and Legion are, of course, both melee units. And I know Cecilia is a really good Blade Tome user, but that's only on Horse Emblem. So what I'm really trying to get to my box now is a Green Mage that is pretty fast, can pull off the Desperation combo, and with the Blade Tome, and I'm not sure, like, what unit I'm gonna use for that it's gonna have to be Nino most likely but I just have really awful luck when it comes to summoning Nino I've summoned her maybe like 20 times at least by this point but not one of them has had the ideal IVs that I would want I think the best Nino I ever summoned was plus res minus defense which is pretty good on her actually because when she has the res boon she gets plus four instead of the usual plus three so that's not a bad one but like most people, I kind of want plus speed or plus attack instead. But this guy here, he's living the life. Look at that. He's got Bunny Camilla and Hinoka. Probably my biggest regret in this game is not actually wailing to get Bunny Camilla. But it's not entirely my fault. Like, how is anyone supposed to know that she'd be so good? And look at that. She has so much defense that I can't actually one round her. Yeah, man. Instead of wailing for her, I wailed for Celica who I really overestimated, if I'm being completely honest. I thought she was going to be a little bit better than she actually turned out to be. But yeah, man, Bunny Camilla, such a good unit. And the lucky few that managed to get her are really living the life. Okay, but anyway, we're moving on to the next fight here. This guy, Vex. Pretty okay team there. Not too tough since they don't have a dancer. They do have a healer though, they have Jenny. I don't know man, the thing about healers, I've said this before, but the concept of healing is actually really good because in the event that you need to bait the same color of unit twice, like let's say the opponent had Naoi and Reinhardt on the same team, normally I would bait both of those units with Hector, but if Hector baits one then his HP is going to be too low to be able to bait the other. So that's where healing can really come in handy. 
but actually using a cleric to heal is kind of not the best since they have a pretty low base stat total and all of the staves aren't that good as, as far as weapons go. They have really low might. And they, they have these cool like secondary effects but they're not like really that good. Like they're cool but they're not good like if that makes any sense. I don't know how to like properly explain that but it's like these neat little effects you can get when you attack with a stave but they're not like super optimal things that they do. I'd just rather them have a little bit more might. But yeah, if you're if you're really gonna if you want to heal that badly in this game, I would recommend using a better unit with a better base stat total and give them either ardent sacrifice or reciprocal aid. And there's a lot of good options for that. Actually, both Lucina and Alm are really good options because they also have the Falchion, which recovers 10 HP to them on every third turn. So if you've got Arden Sacrifice on them and you're healing with the um if you're healing with Arden Sacrifice and then you're getting your HP back right away from the Falchion, that's probably the best way to heal in the arena. And reciprocal aid, of course, with the Legion setup I'm using is really nice as well. I'm in a bit of a tough spot here because Legion's not low enough on HP to use Wings of Mercy, so I had to reciprocal aid a second time there on Azura to get him low enough. And now we can have him fly in front of Ike and get the double on that Kagero. Okay, so far so good. Moving on to the next round now. Okay, another Ryoma. Ryoma's been pretty popular today. Of course, I made that video a couple of days ago, the summons, where I said... I said Gray was better than Ike, and I, I still mean it, because in terms of base stats, he is better. All he really needs is a better inheritable sword to really be able to compete. But Ike just has such a huge advantage, especially right out of the box. Because his default skill setup is probably the best default skill set in the game. Yeah, I Ike is one of those units that right out of the box he's just going to be instantly useful. But, like I said, in the future if we ever get Grey with a better inheritable sword, like... They're already trying to go in that route with the Slaying Edge where it's got 14 might and it's basically just a buffed up Killing Edge. So if we start seeing more weapons that are really good like that, that you can put on any unit, then we might see a bit of a shift there in terms of like, units that have legendary weapons versus units that have really good inheritable weapons. And they had a really good concept actually on the bikini banner where if you were at 100% HP then you would get plus 2 to all your stats when combat starts. But then you take the two chip damage. So if there was actually a sword on that banner that gave that effect, that would be a really good inherit for Grey. Because then if he's getting plus two to all his stats, then he's already going to have practically 16 might on his weapon. And then plus two speed, plus two defense, and plus two res as well. And then you count the fact that he has such a high base stat total already. That would have been, that would have really made Grey a, a real force to be reckoned with. But for the moment, we're just going to get away with using Ike, and... Ike is, of course, my favorite character from Fire Emblem anyway, so it's hard for me to not use him. And even if I do summon the optimal Grey with, like, plus attack, minus res or something, then... Ike is still going to be better because I've got my Ike at plus two. So it takes a lot of investment to actually make Grey better than Ike, but... If all, the, if all the things fall into place for you and you can make an optimal gray, I would say he's definitely worth it. Okay, this guy's got a really fancy team there. He's got basically a Fire Emblem 1 team. He's got Marth, he's got two different Katas. He's got the Bride Kata and the regular one, and then he's got Katria as well. Fire Emblem 1, man, Shadow Dragon. Oh my god, that game. I don't know about you guys, but... Shadow Dragon was probably my least favorite game in the whole series because it just introduced a whole lot of concepts that 
were really in their infancy and just weren't really there yet. So the game felt like an experiment, kinda. Like, Shadow Dragon was the first game to introduce the, um, reclass mechanic, and it just wasn't there yet. They, they hadn't fully tested it, they hadn't really worked out all the kinks to it. You could basically just make any unit into any class, and there were no restrictions, no limitations. So it was really broken, and it was also a little unfun as well, because the cool thing about the original, or not the original, but the previous Fire Emblem games before Shadow Dragon was that all the units were locked to one class, so they were actually memorable for that class. Like, if you're talking about horses, then it's like, okay, Joggin is the worst unit in the game, he's the worst horse. Or if you're talking about, like, I guess, um, Myrmidons, then we've always got Joshua, he's really awesome. We've got Rutger from Fire Emblem 6, and all these really awesome Myrmidons. Marissa from Fire Emblem 8 is actually one of my favorites too. Not because she's a really good unit, but mainly because of her character, she has some really good conversations. So, having the characters be able to reclass into anything kinda took away from the fun and made the characters a little less memorable. Like, imagine in Fire Emblem 7 if you could reclass and you could turn anybody you wanted into a nomad, basically. That basically takes away from Wrath, because everyone loves Wrath, because he's the only nomad in that game. But if you take that away from him, then he's not as special anymore. So I wasn't a fan of the original reclassing system they had in Shadow Dragon. And they also took out support conversations, which was really bad. Support conversations are one of the best things about Fire Emblem just adds so much more fun to the characters and makes them a whole lot more likable. And then, I, I did, because of Shadow Dragon leaving a really bad taste in my mouth, I actually took a break from the series and I didn't play the sequel, um, New Mystery of the Emblem, which was another first because that was the first game to introduce the Avatar characters, the My Units. So I, I missed out on the way they were handled in New Mystery of the Emblem. But, okay, we, we got on a really big tangent there. I didn't mean to talk about all of that, guys. So, forgive me for that, but I'm gonna add one extra fight at the end of this video where I really showcase the Legion a little bit better. Because I didn't really get to showcase him too well in those matchups there. But my score is 4,874, and because this is a late video and I'm uploading it a couple of days after the fact, I did rank up to tier 20, so I was happy about that. But anyway guys, without further ado, here is the Legion in his full capacity. Alright, so we're back now, and I'm gonna finally get to show off that Legion setup that I really wanted to show. I guess we showed it off a little bit earlier in the arena run, but this time it's gonna be a little bit more special. Okay, so this guy here, he's got... Swimsuit Tiki, he's got Bride Cordelia, Celica, and Azura. Pretty solid team. Tiki is, of course, his bonus unit. Cordelia is a bit of a threat. I'd want to bait her normally with Ike, but since she has Sword Breaker, it's gonna be a little tough. And he's also really smart. He's not running Life and Death 3 on his Cordelia, so he's not at minus 5 defense. So it makes it really tough to get the one hit KO on her there. I would highly recommend, if you're gonna run Bride Cordelia, then use either Swift Sparrow or Death Blow so you don't get killed in one hit on the counter attack. But my Ike is a little special, he's got 60 attack after I get Hone Attack on him. So he can actually get the one hit KO. 60 minus 24 is of course 36. So by one point I'm actually able to kill that Cordelia before she can wreck me with the Sword Breaker. And just to make sure I survive, I can always put Hector right besides Ike to get the Spur Defense 3 combo off there. So here we go, I'm just gonna make my move now. And I'm probably gonna move Legion next to Azura as well to get Hone Attack on him on the next turn. Yeah, just like I thought. Okay, so here comes Bride Cordelia. And just like I calculated, I kill her by one point. So now we gotta deal with Celica and Tiki. 
this is where not having distant counter on Azura really sucks. Because I can bait Celica, but I can't actually kill her on the attack. So this is going to be a little tricky. And then on the, I also have to deal with Tiki as well, so that's going to be trouble. Okay, so th this is where my Legion setup really came in handy. So I'm going to have Azura actually finish off Celica there. And then I'm going to, because Legion's HP is low enough, I can have him use Escape Route to fly right in front of Azura and start attacking Tiki right away with the Brave Axe. But this Tiki has close defense 3, so she's going to get plus 6 defense when I attack her. Which is really going to suck, and <laughs> that puts her at 36 defense, so even Legion might have a bit of a rough time there trying to get the one shot on her. But luckily he's got Moonbow and Quick Impulse, so he can get both of those off on the same turn. I actually had to do a little bit of math here to make sure I'd get the one hit KO. It's a pretty tough move there, but in the end I was able to get it done. That's one thing I really hate when I have to do a lot of math while I'm playing in the arena. I just like to lay in bed and when I'm doing my arena run just do them right before I go to sleep. So I'm not like hyper focused and I, I don't have... I don't actually use the damage calculator that they made for this game. It's a really good tool for the people that do use it, but I don't know, like all, all those like matchups that you get out of that and all of those things, take those with a grain of salt. Because when you're in a fight, there's a whole lot of different variables to take into account. It's not always going to go the way that the calculator says it will. But anyway, there you go. That's my final fight there. and pretty good showcase of the legion so yeah guys that's it for the video this is your boy tacho signing out hope you enjoyed it and as always cheers have a great day and i hope to see you again next time